Hello friends, my name is Paul Estabrooks from London, Canada, and while I'm in isolation today because of the COVID-19 problem all over the world, I want to tell you one of my favorite stories. 25 years ago or so, my first visit to Open Doors South Korea, the staff took me to the outskirts of the city of Seoul to a memorial building, like a museum. And it was a memorial to the Christian martyrs of Korea over the years. Inside were two huge rooms lined with pictures of Korean men and women who had given their lives for Jesus Christ. The majority of them were from the Japanese occupation era from 1910 to 1945. Uh, and at the very end of all of the pictures, as you are going to leave this memorial, there is another picture, but it has no picture in it. It is a mirror. And as you look into that frame, the sign underneath says, are you looking at the next martyr for Jesus? Well, that was an interesting question. But what impressed me also about this memorial is that the very first picture, the very first known martyr in Korea of Protestant Christians was R.J. Thomas, not even a Korean, a Welshman from the UK. R.J. Thomas gave his life to Jesus as a young boy in Sunday school thanks to a very faithful Sunday school teacher. He grew up wanting to be a missionary and God gave him a special burden for the Korean people. However, in the mid-1800s, the Korean people were deep into a fear of foreigners and allowed no one else to come into their community. Even within their community, they were fearful. In the late 1700s, Roman Catholic missionaries had led many people to follow Jesus, and by 1863, a major purge occurred because there were so many Christians that the authorities said, let's get rid of them. We don't want this foreign religion in our country. And for a couple of years in the early 1860s, it's estimated that eight to 10,000 Roman Catholic Christians were martyred for their faith. R.J. Thomas went to do the best, second best, if, it, if you will, thing that he could do. And that was to go to China and wait for an opportunity to take the gospel to Korea. He waited in Shanghai, and in fact, he was a contemporary of Hudson Taylor, may have even lived at the Hudson Taylor China Inland Mission compound right there and near the waterfront in Shanghai. The first year he was there, he lost his wife. And in his grief, he settled down to study the Korean language, as well as, of course, the Chinese language in order to live where he was and minister where he was living. In 1865, an opportunity to realize his dream to take the gospel to Korea occurred. A ship came into the Shanghai port. It was an American ship, a trading ship, named the USS General Sherman. The General Sherman was announcing the fact that they were going to go up the Taidong River into the northern part of Korea and try and establish trade with the Korean people. R.J. Thomas signed on board. This was his chance and he took with him the best things, the best gifts that he believed he could take and those were Bibles. Now these Bibles were translated just decades earlier by Robert Morrison another missionary from England who translated the scriptures into the Chinese language and now they were available throughout the country. He took six or so, as many as you could stack in a handful, of these Chinese Bibles. Now any scholar in Asia at that time, and there were few of them, there was not widespread literacy. Only a few people who were known as scholars could read but those who could read, could read this script, and so he took them on board. The USS Sherman, General Sherman, went up the river, and when they reached uh, Pyongyang, they did not get a warm welcome. In fact, they were rebuffed. Uh, the Korean people wanted nothing to do with these foreigners, and no opportunity to trade in any way. Uh, and so they turned the ship around, 
and as they turned it around, it ran aground on a sandbar. For two weeks, the ship's the crew held off attacks by the Korean people. Finally, the Koreans had a smarter plan. They set some small ships and tied them together and set them on fire, blazing fire, and surrounded the USS General Sherman until the USS General Sherman caught fire and everyone on board had to jump off. They took their weapons and they waded ashore. And as they came ashore, the local people killed them. R.J. Thomas took the only weapon that he knew, which was the sword of the spirit. He took a stack of Bibles and he waded ashore saying in as best he could in the Korean language, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But as he held out these books, a Korean man with a club clubbed him over the head and he fell dead on the sands of the shore of the Taidong River. His books fell on the ground and the man who killed him picked up these books. They had some decorative pictures in them and he thought, oh, I might find some use for these. So he took those books home to his house. Now, most of the homes there were surrounded by a courtyard or the courtyard is surrounded by a wall and the tradition of the day was to plaster with paper the outside of the wall. And so this man took all of the pages of these Bibles that R.J. Thomas had brought to Korea and plastered the wall around his home. He was surprised one day to go out and see a group of scholars standing there reading every page. And he was shocked. Why would they read this? And they kept coming back day after day. One of those scholars had a nephew who was extremely interested. He seemed to want to read every single page before he was ready to stop looking at this wall. And that young man became a follower of Jesus Christ. Years later, he or a colleague that he had influenced traveled up into Shenyang, into northeast China. And they joined there with a Scottish missionary, John Ross, to translate the first Bible into the Korean language. R.J. Thomas had prayed many times, asking God to give him the chance to take the gospel to Korea. He died before he ever saw his prayer answered. But God did answer his prayer not in a way he would have suspected or you and I would have suspected, but God answered prayer. God has everything under control. And so we remember R.J. Thomas today for that. When the missionaries from Canada went to northern part of Korea in the 1880s, they already found one house church there. As a result of those Bible pages being pasted, on the wall of the man who killed R.J. Thomas. Well, in my daily devotional called um, Daily Inspiration from the Lion's Den, I tell this story also, and here's how I conclude it. The response to this story says, today I leave my placement, my purpose, my potential in the hands of a good and loving God. And my prayer is, Lord, May I ever realize that you are in control and thus truly allow you to be Lord of my life. Brothers and sisters, there is no panic in heaven.